It's a presidency that was defined by war, but ended by the military. Omar al-Bashir seized power in Sudan in 1989 and ruled with an iron fist. He's now under military detention and the country's at a watershed. As a brigadier in the Sudanese army, Bashir took control during the long civil war between the North and the South. He wanted to keep Sudan united, but the eventual peace deal in 2005 led to a referendum in 2011. It saw the independent state of South Sudan declared six months later, but the succession of the South also took three quarters of the country's oil. For years, Bashir has been a pariah in Western eyes. Accused in 2009 of war crimes and crimes against humanity, stemming from the conflict in the Darfur province that began in 2003. He was indicted by the International Criminal Court. We hear story after story of armed men attacking defenseless women and children, of uh, women being raped. The United Nations called the actions of Bashir's forces ethnic cleansing and estimated between 200 and 400,000 people died. But one thing has been made clear. The ousted president won't be sent to The Hague to face the war crimes charges, not in the short term. We as a military council will not deliver the president abroad during our period in office. We have our values. We are soldiers. If they want to deliver him, let them do this after us. Protests that began in Sudan in September over fuel and bread prices gathered momentum and turned into a wider call for the end of Bashir's rule. But it came at a human cost. Dozens were killed during crackdowns, with hundreds reportedly imprisoned. And despite Bashir's exit, protesters fear the military takeover could be much of the same. We came out from our houses so the situation would change and so that Bashir would step down and to have a better person take charge. A four-month journey where we didn't do anything and the people who died died for nothing because nothing has changed. Which is why, they say, the street protests will continue. We have an example like Egypt. Eight years ago, they pushed them out of Tahrir Square. Until today, no one is allowed into Tahrir Square. If the people leave their position, expect this revolution to fail and expect them to disappear. He led his country for three decades, but Omar al-Bashir, in a few short days, has become part of the past. But those who've been close to him for 30 years may want to hold on to power. For Sudan to avoid anarchy, this is a political crisis that will need to be solved quickly and peacefully. Francis Collings, The Newsmakers.